Welcome, everybody, to the Gimmick Infringement Podcast. I am Brad Winchester, and with me, as always, is my tag team partner, Tyler McDowell Blanken. Tyler, we gotta we gotta reorganize that that intro. I don't think you're getting enough love there. Uh, it sounds like I'm just tagging you in, like you're not the man behind all the machine here. It is WrestleMania weekend. Night one is over. I'm gonna kick it to you. How are you doing? Yeah, listen, man. I'm always happy to be a hot tag, especially for you. So I appreciate you. I'm doing so well. It has been a beautiful day. Wrestling just overload right now. It, we're maybe halfway through this or a little more than halfway, and I'm already well behind. Uh, way more behind than I have any business being, Brad. I'm sure we'll, we'll get into that here in a little <laughs> bit, but I'm doing great. I'm happy to see you, and I'm really excited to talk about WrestleMania. How are you? I'm great. I did not watch uh, ROH this week. I did watch everything else and I feel tired. I, I I don't know what else to say. And when I say everything else, I don't mean impact. I don't mean GCW. I don't mean MLW. So really I just watched WWE products and AEW products. And I can't even say I paid that much attention to all of them. I'd be I, a liar if I said I paid close attention to them. It's just so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, listen, my man, you are, um, not only doing great work with GI, if you're watching this, if, even if you're listening right now, you can uh, hear and, or see Brad's brilliance with uh, the GI mania takeover, right? That That's all you. Got to give you credit, though, because you are um, much more up to speed than me. <laughs> I didn't see. Uh, I miss so much of NXT and I'm in my feelings about it because, you know, I've been about NXT for a long time. Even in the 2.0 phase, I've committed to the PLEs. But I was also not in grad school back then. I had yeah. another group meeting today. For Animal Man. Today, it, it directly conflicted with NXT. I got to watch the women's ladder match. But it was one of those gimmicks where I had the match on, but I also had my laptop in my lap preparing for said meeting. So it was like the TV was getting 60% of my attention at most. Um, had the Zoom meeting, which actually went really well, Brad, really well. Um, one of the group members actually said this is the most cohesive group they've been a part of since starting the program like a year ago. So I was like, oh, damn, like this is actually good synergy. And um, I didn't tell you this, but the the person who had their camera off turned their camera on this past week. Nice. It turns out she's a beautiful woman, by the way, too. She's a sister. I was like, OK, like I spoke too soon. I need to give all of this a shot. They're great. Um, I don't like that it conflicted with wrestling, but I told you that via text message that we got our group project done. Um, so the Sunday scaries, I think, are going to be avoided. But uh, yeah, man, you're far, far more ahead of me. I only saw the women's ladder match. Super happy for Indy. I hear our dude Carmelo Hayes is the new champion, yes, which sir. makes me very happy. Okay. But I didn't see any of that main event except for his entrance, uh, thanks to Twitter. So you are far more ahead of me. Please give yourself more credit. I appreciate that. I, I watched more NXT than you did today. And that is that is just a weird statement for me. Uh, never, because never I, happened. I, I kind of actively avoid it, but I went on to the I went on to the uh, WWE cock to watch uh to the one of those it was like a documentary on the history of WrestleMania. Uh, I, I probably saw it before, but I didn't remember it. And uh, definitely, definitely several years old. And I thought I would jump back into it. So I opened up Peacock and on there was, hey, Stand and Deliver's on right now. And I went, I'm here. Why not? Let's go. I, I, I was trying to avoid going out to the garage to, to in, inflate the tire on my car, which had dropped to 20 PSI, I believe, was the reading because I could not. You- fixed it that's, well yeah it was just i was driving to I, low. I drove to eh, it's been lower no i drive to yeah well yeah it's I, not I, good I get, I get heartburn when that that john is at like 27 28 oh i don't was, even let it get i'm lying i don't even get let it get that low man when it's when we're talking 30 brad i gotta get i gotta get some inflation going there's on. no way for me to know because i'm not getting that that sensor replaced because it's bad so it's always on no matter what so i never know if it's low or if it's just on and I'm not going to be just out in my driveway, just compulsively checking my 2009 shitty Chevy Aveo. I honestly, if the wheel shoots off and wrecks the car with me in it, I'll sue somebody and then get a different car. Cause like, my God, I hate this car. 
It's just, it's a death trap. Do you know what I have to do when, when that car hits the speed limit, Tyler, on the interstate? What, what do you have to do? I have to figure out the combination of windows. One of them has to go down a little bit. Or you just hear <laughs> whistling, whistling through the windows uh, on the interstate. Yeah. I, what is this? What? What? Yeah, that's not. It's that's quite not. the design flaw there, Chevy. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness! That, yeah, that's not uh, that's not optimal, man. No, and I think it's uh, it's it's bad wheels, not bad tires. Mm. Uh, the wheels, uh, I think we hit a pothole in probably like 2014, mm. and uh, it it bent one of the wheels. It's just been that way ever since. Uh, I remember the guy at Discount Tire going like, "Well, I can get it on there if you don't care if I bend the wheel back." So <laughs> that's that's what we're driving around. Uh, amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I've had my fair share of discount visits as well. Usually good experiences, though. I can't I can't hate on. Hey, on he, them. he saved me money and got me back on the road. Was, and I've been back on the road ever since. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like despite the car shaking a little bit this morning, which made me go, hmm, maybe it's time. Uh, I, I could not find the pressure gauge anywhere. So I went to you. I went to Dollar General. I went to Family Dollar. I even went to the Quick Trip. Nobody had pressure gauges. It's like I. I have to get back on the interstate with this car that I know is low on air to go see if I'm low on air. What is happening? So that's, that's a definition of, of a conundrum. That's, yeah, it was a, it's a bad that's, time. That's, that's rough. Well, but I, lead, but I found it. I found it. We're good. Speaking of cars and leading into WrestleMania, mm. um, I so I have a quick story. I was invited to a childhood friend's home to watch the Final Four, at least the first game. So when he hit me up, I was like, oh man, I haven't seen this dude in a long time. Like again, we grew up together. Um, so much life has happened since I like last saw him in in person for like a sit down occasion. His dad passed away a few years ago, and he's now he, he my friend is now a pharmacist. And like again, so much life, like incredibly difficult situations, accomplishments. I'm gonna make time for this, right? That's one of my resolutions. Like make time for people you you love and cherish. So I was proud of myself because I did that and I was social. And I went over, watched the first half of the game, Florida Florida Atlantic versus San Diego State. Really good game. And then I said, all right, y'all. And they, they knew this. I said, it's halftime. Listen, I got WrestleMania in an hour. Um, I told them about you and the podcast. And I said, listen, this, this is a business decision. This isn't just me being <laughs> antisocial. I literally have to watch this because this, uh, this is part of my income. Um, yeah. This is part of our our, our GI right. Pro- Jet Jet can't fuel itself, man. No, no, it cannot. Right, the people need our to hear our thoughts. So, long story long, I end up leaving. Then I figure out, okay, I want to pick up dinner though, because I know, like, I'm not going back out again. Like, once I get home, I know you and I are going to record late tonight. So I was going to go Subway, but then I thought I kind of feel like a Chipotle bowl. So I, I pulled up the Chipotle app, not realizing that I haven't ordered on the app since like summer 22. So I had to take some time to retrieve my password. I know you're very good at retrieving passwords, Brad. It takes me some time. So I had to retrieve my password. I ordered it. I found the closest Chipotle. And then uh, the clock is at like 445, right? So I'm like, oh my God, I'm 20 minutes away from home. I'm, I'm going to be late to WrestleMania. Uh, I went into full like Jason Statham in the transporter mode. Like I am going to get home to watch this damn show. And uh, I got two red lights before I I was finally at at, at my destination, right at the Casa. And I was just thinking to myself, like, man, this is this is just classic me rolling in. So I got in, uh, but luckily I didn't miss anything. It was just Snoop Dogg and The Miz. So I was relieved because I sat down at 508 thinking I missed the Cena entrance. I'm, I'm, I'm a failure. What am I doing? And I guess I didn't miss anything. So um, Snoop and the Miz, did you see any of this? Was it good? It was there. That's the best, best thing I could say. Good? Not really. Bad? Not really. It was just, it was fine. It was better than the Miz by himself, I think, to open – uh, you get that, like you got, you had some Snoop stuff in it. Uh, I mostly heard it cause I was trying to set up, uh, in, in here, getting, getting things ready for the pod and doing some other things around the house and frantically moving things around. And yeah, I, I it, it was, it was fine. I, I thought it was cool. I didn't know he was coming. So I thought that was, uh, that was a cool little, uh, surprise to have, uh, to have Snoop, but maybe that was common knowledge and I just wasn't in on it. But I think, yeah, I think. 
I think there were rumors. I don't know if it was confirmed, but big time rumors that obviously it's California. He's there. He has a great relationship with WWE. Um, I wasn't heartbroken though that I missed it. All, all respect to Snoop, but uh, I, you know, in California, he's he's the most over. No, I don't. Well, I don't know. I mean, really, he, for, he, him, for him, for him, yeah. yes, that's yeah, where yeah. he is the most over. Yes, of course. Bad Bunny was there though. Like, we, yes, yeah. he. We we had our fair share of celebrity appearances. I believe on Spanish commentary. I, I'm curious. I kind of want to go listen to the Spanish commentary now because be he was hanging out with the commentary table. So I, I just assume he was on a headset, but he gets a, he got involved in the the later match, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, setting up uh, for Puerto Rico backlash. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hundred percent. Yeah. So to open the card though, Brad, the first official match saw Austin Theory successfully defend his uh, United States Championship. He beat the returning legend John Cena. This match clocked in at just over eleven minutes. You and I, where were we on on this match? I think both of us were were going theory for yeah. the win. I of course thought, okay, maybe there's a chance Cena wins open challenge on Monday. Yeah, me drops too. it to Jay White or Braun Breaker. Doesn't make sense, so. Though. I gotta confess, I, I wasn't 100 percent theory, but I was probably a good maybe 80, 85. Uh, what did you think of this match? What did you think of the finish? Uh, tell tell me all your thoughts on this opener. It's about what I expected. I, I had like the good Cena spots and there were, there were some moments in it where I was like, this doesn't look good or make sense. But other, other than that, it, you know, it was, it was fine. It was good for Austin theory. It's good that, uh, you know, Cena, I, I thought the spot with the, the correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I might be blurring things together. There was the ref bump in this match, right? Definitely. Um, I think yeah. the way they set that up, I didn't expect it. So I thought that was cool. What was this the one where we watched so much wrestling? Um, I think it was a really weak ref bump, right? Didn't yes. theory theory, I think, picked him up and then Cena's boot, his his foot hit the midsection of the ref. Yeah. And then the ref sold it like he got shot with a musket. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. From a Joe. Like, like, like a wonder bus. That, yeah. that I was really upset about that, Brad. I was like, okay, I get like we this is business, we have to sell. But I, I've received a harder hit from Freya. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. like it, yeah. it's accidentally, of course. I, I just thought that was, I wish it would have connected more. I, I was really hot about that. I was like, you had to clarify that Freya thing though, but you're right. Listen, man, the, the part that got me and we talked about this before we started was uh, Cena, Cena going for the submission that I refused to call the STF because it doesn't make sense. The submission that he was doing, and uh, not being able to interlock his fingers because Theory's fighting him on it. But Theory was literally not doing a thing to fight it. Yet Cena was there struggling like, I can't get my hands there. But it's like, just close your fingers. They're right there. And there's nothing blocking <laughs> them. It, there was stuff like that where I feel like you, Cena was struggling going, oh, grab my hand, stupid. And... It, it, it didn't happen. It just looked, maybe it was the angle. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, it could have just been the shot, but it, it, there were, there were some spots in it where I was like, this is whatever, but beating John Cena on the biggest stage you could beat John Cena on after John Cena comes out to a ton of make a wish kids. Yeah, that was awesome. I thought all of that was so good, man. Yeah. Like the moment, the entrance, all of that stuff was great. I think that's a feel good thing. A great way to kick off WrestleMania. I, I thought the match was fine. It didn't blow me away. It didn't really underwhelm. I don't really care about the finish. I thought it was, it's not making theory look stronger by any, any stretch, but it at least got him the win so that he could retain so that he could continue and hopefully pick up some steam. Cause now we can say he beat John Cena at WrestleMania. Yeah. And you know, he's going to. Yes, I, I think we only, you know, we have to wait less than 48 hours before we we hear that from him. Yeah, the right guy won in this case. Watching Cena, there were actually a few different performers on the show that I watched and thought, man, it's such a privilege to see them in the ring. I literally remember being 10 or 15 and, and watching these people at the top of their game. And so watching them now, even though there's definitely ring rust, um, and they're not doing maybe as big of spots as they used to. Still felt really grateful to see some of these these childhood heroes. But you're right. This was the 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 
right and not the right ending, right? Because it was the low blow and then the A Town down one, two, three. Like that seems a little lazy, but I'm glad that Theory did pick up the win because um, we're at a place where we really need to elevate new talents, like bring in legends, honor them, absolutely. But I think it's more than fitting that the current talent uh, get the dub on, on the leg gets the dubs on the legends more often than not. So big win for theory, uh, probably the biggest win of his career. And obviously the company is high on him. So I think it's, it's poised to be a big 2023 for him. Yes, yeah, but I'm totally with you, especially the legends that aren't full time anymore. Right. John Cena coming in to wrestle once a year to keep the streak going. I, I get it. The, you know, the Rey Mysterio match, which we'll talk about later, little bit of a different scenario for that one, but Definitely. you know, if, if, if a big name is going to come in, that big name that is retired should probably lose unless it's baby face over the, the, the heel to pay off something that's been building for a very long time. Like the KO stone cold stuff. Uh, you were burying the city in which it was in more than you were burying the talent. So you have to, you have to have that guy lose. If it was buried stone cold, then I feel like KO could maybe do it. And, yeah. and theory that, was that, was, that was one, that was one year ago. Like, yeah. You saying that just made me think, oh, yeah, this time, literally 12 months ago, we were watching uh, KO and Stone Cold. Heel KO. I know. Crazy. I know. What, Crazy where yeah. we are, man. What, what what a time. Did you have any yeah. additional thoughts? So I didn't mean to. Not a single off, thought. No, I nope. definitely did. Okay. What about you? Uh, no, no. I want to talk about the next match. Perfect. So the tag team men's tag team showcase. Shocked women's, you want to talk about this one. Women's on night two. Uh, men's was tonight. You You know I do. So the Street Profits were victorious. They defeated the teams of uh, first Braun Strowman and Ricochet, Alpha Academy, and then the Viking Raiders. This match was under 10 minutes, but what a showcase. Banger. I, I felt Ooh. great that every talent got a moment to shine. It was a sprint. What say you, Brad? Dude, Braun Strowman did a frog splash. Ricochet did one of the prettiest shooting star presses to the outside actually like went too far into space and like almost died. <laughs> you know, I got the shirt for a reason. Yes. I took the selfie. That was part of my Chipotle story as well. That's why I was late. I had to take a selfie for internet clout, but That's true. I got That's the shirt, true. man. You, you know, that shooting star filled me with glee. Oh my God. I mean, he still got it. He, he floated out and like midway through it, decided to flip around the other direction. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Incredible. And then he did another one very casually into the ring immediately following that. Like, it's just, yeah. what? He's, he happening? seemed really amped for this match. It's, it's, I'm totally taking your airtime, but I have no, to take for Ricochet. Um, it, I, I love us. I love what we try to do here. Um, one of my favorite moments of 2023 for GI is us fantasy booking Ricochet onto this card. And what would you say about a literally a week later? Yes. We with the with the the window, the door, whatever cliche we want to use, it was open, and we got him on the card. Brett, I was down weeks ago thinking another year, uh, another WrestleMania, uh, another show with no Ricochet, but we got it. He showed out. He seemed really amped, which um, just made me feel feel so so good for him. A peek behind the curtain. Uh, yes, I can't confirm. Uh, I was writing the description and the chapters for this, and it was the path for Ricochet to Mania. I think something like that. But that was literally your question: was like, how does how do we get Ricochet on the card? And here we are. And we said like God, it's probably going to be the tag team, right? And God how be, is still in the go. blessing business. Yes, thank you, universe. Sure. Absolutely. So Chad Gable finally got to show out and show how unbelievably strong he is. Let's talk Dude, about it. That was. Chaos Bonkers. theory rolling German to Braun Strowman. That was twice his nuts. size. Twice his size. Strap that and, man and, up. Strap that still, man up. It's he still did it and made it look like it wasn't that difficult. Effortless. Unbelievable. And I love that the crowd popped when he got up and yelled, Thank you, because he deserved that one. Like, yeah, that was good. Thank that you. was earned. Yeah. He's, People he's were a, like, You're welcome. Like that he's, was he needs to have a future yeah. singles belt. I really think that's in the works for yes. him. It has Why, to be. I think splitting with Otis. Uh, eventually here like that'll be the start of it because at some point he's going to end up doing that to otis in a match mm. otis will probably get the dub yeah when otis they split but otis otis me. will probably get his it. money yeah. and he i'm okay all, with awesome. i love otis as a comedy act it was great when he was doing it and they stopped it 
And I think he needed that character change, especially after all of his character revolved around Mandy. But it's it's been so fun to watch him come back to that slowly and over time because it's a ridiculous character and I love it. You need those comedy spots. Like Orange Cassidy has been an incredible uh, wrestling run as a comedy character because he can do both. And I think Otis has the potential to be that for the WWE where he's this dude that can do both. And also he's the size of Vader and can do Vader things. And it's probably way stronger. 100%. You do one of my favorite Otis impressions. He <laughs> he always pops me with the squint and the and they have him in and Chad Gable and some of the promotional commercials now as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I love him. I don't know how long the Alpha Academy is going to stay together with the, these teases of him join, joining Maximum Male Models. But I'm also the same guy that thought the Street Profits were going to disband after SummerSlam. Yeah. And one well, could I, argue I that they're on, they're on the way toward... Uh, being at the top of the tag division again and are as hot as they've ever been. So dude, what, what do I know? I'm Angel- just a dude with the microphone. Angelo Dawkins. Did, did you see him take out Braun Strowman? Wow. Oh yes. my God. That looks that, like a shoot. I was going to say that looked like dude, Braun must have owed him money or something. Like that. I think he must have owed it. I, I don't even, I can't top that. I think he definitely owes it. He was money. probably in the back, like Cincinnati and its football team suck. And then he just took it personally and came out and blasted him for I, it. I think so. Like, that, I, I just, that, D1 that linebacker. Was incredi- that was an incredible moment. Shout out Angelo Dawkins. I know it's easy to give Tez uh, a lot of the airtime because he is amazing. Because uh, he's in the air but, all the time. And he he's absolutely is. Yeah, it's but Angelo Dawkins is also incredible. Yes. My goodness, did he show out. And I also don't want to undersell the Viking Raiders. I actually yes. think. Yes, thank you. Minus minus Sarah Logan is Valhalla. Get that out of here. Their entrance is so dope. I love their entrance. That horn sound. Yeah, we they saw them live. For it. Yes. July yes. 4th, 2022. Uh, and and, and at that, I'll tell you, at that point, I was like, ah, this. Like, they're getting better, and I like that they're being just, like, just killers. And that's a lot of fun to watch. But then seeing it on the screen, their presentation now is just so good. And it's been great since uh, Valhalla. But I also don't. They haven't done anything with that. They just go like, she speaks to the gods, but they don't do anything with that. They just say it. So I don't know what's going on with that. That's very confusing. But I think Eric and Ivar are just so talented. Those dudes should not be able to extend their legs that high at that size. Their their kicks are some of the best kicks in, in wrestling. And they're just unbelievably talented, unbelievably athletic. I, I could see them getting gold sooner than later. Like they... They also need to have have gold mm-hmm. in, in the near future. Yeah, yeah. They they seem poised for it. Really yeah. happy that they got to shine. This match was just everything it needed to be, and and then some. The right minutes team. And thirty seconds. It was like a it was like a one of the best matches of the night. Yeah. Listen, I'm never going to advocate for Ricochet to take the pin, but I do think it made a lot of sense here. Not only because he uh, got the win on Friday, but if you look at all of the teams involved. Okay, Angelo Dawkins hits an amazing from the heavens. Like you called it, I forget how you phrased it, but it was basically instant death. Like yes, d- like Dawkins has the knees to ricochet his ribs. Yeah, they just then, murdered him in the ring. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was frog it was, splash it was, onto the knees. Oh it my looks snug. I know those yeah. guys are are all the three of them are friends in real life. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think it honestly to me it made sense for Ricochet to take the pin rather than Strowman, the Viking Raiders, or even Alpha Academy. Frankly, um, so right team one. This match was super fun. The crowd was hot. I really enjoyed it. I just, man, I was, I thought about that spot for, for a good five minutes after it, the way that match finished, not just because of how cool it was. Cause the counter into that spot, it just all happened so quick as it should. Like if, if you're telling a story, it should be like, bang, bang, bang. It's the way the, the main event ended too. There was no downtime. It was just like, nope, we got to go now. Boom, boom, boom. The 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 thing that got me afterward was like if if Tez overshoots that by three inches, you break Dawkins' legs and hips and Ricochet dies on some knees. Like the the precision okay. of this stuff is just incredible. Like one of them could have been easily just dead if one little thing goes off. Montez slips on the rope, overshoots it. Uh, Dawkins slips as Ricochet comes down. He lands on a head. Like there's so many things that could happen. Like the, the women's match. I love that match. First of all, 
but but watching Charlotte just eat shit on her face uh, when she flipped over, if something like that happened when Montez was in the air, I mean, we could be having a whole different conversation right now. Uh, and to, for all of that stuff that we just had to happen in eight minutes and 30 seconds, and they told a story and it was really exciting. Tyler, it's been two straight years of incredible multi-tag team tag matches at WrestleMania. I only wish Randy Orton was in this uh, because last year's was incredible as well. So I, I just, yeah, night one so far, banger, but we're on to match three. We are. We are. So Seth Rollins, excuse me, Seth freaking Rollins defeated Logan Paul. We can rejoice. I don't think this was uh, really ever in question. Of course, I always get a little bit worried because um, I don't know. It's stranger things have happened. Yeah. But uh, he did it, man. He finally won at WrestleMania. This match was OK. If you know this, right, because you've known me for for a few years now. Um, long time listeners of viewers may know that I am not a huge Logan Paul fan. I, I'm a dinosaur, Brad. I don't understand why he's popular. They always show, oh, he has 23 million followers yeah. and he's an influencer and blah, blah, blah. I, I don't understand it. Yes, he is athletic. Yes, he can do some really cool things in the ring, but I don't, I don't care about him. I don't need to see him have a match ever again. The frog splash on his friend, who I guess I'm supposed to know, KSI. He's a YouTube personality and boxer. I don't care about this guy. I don't need to see him. I don't need to see the stupid energy drink. I don't need (laughs) any of it anymore, ever. Yes, he can do a backflip. Yes, he can hit a frog splash. Okay, but he has no talent. He got here because... He's just a mediocre white guy with good hair, and and he's in WrestleMania. Th- there are so many people on the roster that aren't on this card, but Logan Paul is in a prominent spot. I'm done. I'm done with my Logan Paul promo. I I couldn't stand it. The moment he came out and he had his his energy drink, and, and again, oh, this is KSI's. If I'm supposed, to... I don't like any of it. I'm so happy Seth Rollins won. He deserves my promo. Uh, in a complimentary way, I shouldn't talk about Logan Paul anymore. <laughs> Seth Rollins won. The entrance was cool. Next year, I want him to win a title at this show. What do you think? That was amazing. First of all, um, second I of can't all, stand it. yeah, uh, I, I feel very similarly. Somebody was like, I'm, "I'm telling you, like in 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 school on Friday, one of my kids was like, hey, does your store?' Because one of my kids, their parents own the brand of a grocery store, and they were like." Do you guys sell prime there, right? You have prime there. And I went, who cares if they have prime? Don't buy that. It was just like instinct at that point. I was just like, don't, don't worry about that. They're like, why don't you like prime? I'm like, I'm not supporting Logan Paul stuff. That dude took a video in a suicide forest in Japan for clout. No, no, thank yep. you. Hard pass. Yep. I'm out. Yep. Well, yeah. Ab- absolute trash to have this guy come in. On on the Shawn Michaels entrance, yeah, that's Tyler. He happen. came down on a zip line and was on a microphone headset thing for some reason. Yeah. Very weird. Yeah. I hated the. I hated both of the entrances. Hated them. Hated them. Mm. I hated Logan Paul coming down on a zip line and the conductor thing. I was like, oh, this is really cool. Until and it, it was wasn't. weird. Yeah. It was just weird. I don't know yeah, what the style it was. And then it was like, no. It and was... then it would go again. And then it was, nope. And then it went away. And they were like playing the music over the top of them. And I don't right. know why. Right. What was the point of that? Yeah, yeah. That was weird. You're you're right. It wasn't, as Seth Rollins' entrances go, especially on this stage, this, I said it was cool, but I don't, you're you're very persuasive, actually. It was just the conductor guy. And like you said, them, it, it, I don't think it was befitting of, all that is, um, you know, Seth Rollins, Seth freaking Rollins. They, he deserved they, better than that. He said he was going to come out and the, the chorus of people around him were going to like echo through eternity or whatever the hell he said. Uh, he he came out, had a conductor. They got it going. He should have come out to just the crowd while the conductor was conducting it. I that don't know cool. why yeah. they had him conduct, stop it, conduct, stop it, conduct, Stop it. Weirdly playing at the wrong times under the conductor who's conducting because, I don't know, Bob and the truck forgot to hit play. And then 
you just hear burn it down. And then Seth comes out. I was like, what was the point? Could have skipped all of that. Would have been five minutes shorter. Could have skipped all of that mess. Because Seth coming down looked awesome. His entrance always rules. But they could have done it totally differently. I, I hated it. I thought it was a waste of time because it didn't make any sense. If you're going to conduct and, and have the people sing you out, then have them sing you out. Otherwise, don't play the song. Yeah. Like, yeah. We doing? I, I didn't even ask what you rewinding. Major rewind. I didn't even ask what you thought about the set. Oh, the set was incredible, man. Such right. a brilliant idea. They were I, high, high up too. I, uh, when, when they revealed it yesterday with the skateboarders, right. I thought that was super cool. Um, I thought it was super extra to do the, here's what the set is, but, uh, whatever it was, it was a thing that happened. But as soon as I saw the set, I was like, oh, that's dope. They, they made it look like the entrance to an old school movie theater with all the posters up in the background. And it's very wide and low, but the whole set is higher up. So it being low isn't actually low. It's it was a really, a really cool aesthetic idea. I love it, man. I thought this is one of the coolest sets I've in, in years. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. I loved it. Yeah, it looked, it looked awesome. At, at least for Mania. I'm still going to say my favorite set in the last several years has been Clash at the Castle. That set was amazing. Oh, yeah, that, I mean, that whole show, everything. But, about yeah, that, that, that show was, yeah, <laughs> that show was incredible. Yeah. But as um, far as the match goes, yeah, 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 yeah. it's fine. Right person won again. Yeah. Need, needed a big win for Seth, and, and he got it. Um, well, speaking of, of big wins and, and incredible talents, our next match, uh, six women were facing off here, right? Six women tag. Trish Stratus, Lita, and Becky Lynch defeated Damage Control. We know Damage Control is comprised of Bailey, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky, three favorites of GI. What did you think here, Brad? I, I know we were talking off air, and um, did the right team win? Mm, no. No, I mean, Bailey doesn't need a win. Becky doesn't really need a win. Those are the two big active stars in here that are pretty bulletproof. Trisha and Lita definitely don't need a win, right? Like they're 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 in the Hall of Fame. They've solidified their career. Legends. Going back to our legend talk, yeah. right? Two living legends here. Absolutely. They're living legends and Lita's a current champion in WWE. She is she is. What? It's twenty two it's twenty twenty three. I know. Wow. So so it, yeah, Dakota Kai, Eosky, they're still here. They were champions. People said it was too fast. They didn't deserve it, blah, blah, blah. And then they lose at WrestleMania to two people that they're 15 to 20 years younger than probably. I have no idea what their ages are, their age differences are. And uh, frankly, I don't care. It, yeah, I, I don't think that the right team win. I think damage control could have used a win. That's all I'll say. I thought the match was fine otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have loved to see Damage Control pick up the win here. I, I know we didn't have official predictions for this one, but I, was, I wasn't I was shocked when the – the uh, I don't didn't have one name, but um, Team Trish, Team Becky, Team Lita, whatever we want to call them. I wasn't surprised when they picked up the win. I actually pretty much expected it. But uh, I agree with you. I think it could have been big for Damage Control. I think about – Speaking of SummerSlam, when they debuted, when Bailey came yeah. out, and then Dakota, and then Eon was like, "Oh snap, let's let's go!" Like this is going to be a team that's a team that's going to be a force to be reckoned with. It seems like slowly but surely they've kind of, by no means have they become a joke in the division, but I don't know that they're feared within the division. You know, for storyline sake, I think when they first debuted, I really saw the potential for that for them to just wreck shop in that division. And now it kind of feels like, I don't know. Have we seen the best of them? I certainly hope not because I love each of them. But uh, yeah, I wasn't mad at the the finish. I, again, I, I pretty much expected it. I'm just curious to see what they do with those women, women's tag team titles. I would think that Becky and Lita are more so transitional champs. Yeah. So I don't know if they drop them back to EO and Dakota or if there's another team waiting in the wings that I'm not thinking of. I know there's the well, women's we'll tag tomorrow, showcase yeah. on night two, but uh, I'm really eager to see where this goes. I just want good things for damage control. Um, but again, I got to see Trish and Lita on this big stage. And Alita and, salt, man. 
and and Alita's a a, a nice Lita song. Yeah, it was really good. Becky be, having Becky in a prominent role on the show is Avalanche is ma- Manhandle is yes is massively important. There were some really fun spots too. I yes. know Trish Trish with the head scissors a couple times. Oh yes. So yeah, I I I really enjoyed this match, even Me though. Too. Even though Damage Control lost, um, but again, honestly, just feeling really privileged to see Trish and Lita doing their thing out there. Like, exactly, my my goodness, it's 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 great to see. Unbelievable to see. Super happy the women got time. They got f- almost fifteen minutes plus the entrances and stuff, so <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I I thought it was uh, yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. It, I didn't think it was like a classic five star match or anything. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was a ton of fun. We got to see legends in the ring. I just wish Damage Control would have picked up the win. I feel like I still feel like in the back of my head, they are going to lose the belt, and it's going to be Trish just turning on Lita for old times' sake. There's and like be, there's been a lot of chatter amongst yeah, I mean, the IWC about that. I just I, I partially thought that might happen tonight at some point. Too. I was me really too. watching Trish with a close eye, even after they won and yeah. they were like celebrating in front of the crowd. Just the body position, I was like. Is Trish about to hit a forearm to the back of Lita <laughs> yes. right now? Yes. Like it was like a really like wide shot. And I was like, oh snap, they're doing it right now after the match, and yeah. it didn't happen. So may- maybe that's why we have to tune in on Monday. Yeah, oh, well, I'm. I always love the Raw after after me, man. We just uh, yeah, it is must. I'll think for that. We're gonna we're gonna get call ups. We're gonna get surprises. I, I love that stuff. Yeah. Our next well, match. Yeah, though, man. After you, I, I was gonna say I'll, I'll I'll do it. Almost the same amount of time. Very, very, very different entrances. This for me was, I didn't think it was going to get better than this. This is the moment that the show really just took off and did its own thing. Our match to the the tag team matches, uh, our match with all the tag teams, and it was incredible, short. And then we had Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul, which is like this big star, lots of following, a lot of uh, uh, moments on there. A lot of attention for for the show, and then we change it up to a women's match with legends in it. We have old school. We have the women wrestling, really well paced out card, and then we get the stories. Now we're into like the big time storytelling elements. Rey Mysterio, new excuse me, Hall of Famer Rey Mysterio, That's defeated right. his son Dominic Mysterio. Before we get into the match, Tyler, I got to know your thoughts about the entrances. Loved it. I, this is going to be blasphemous. I think Dom had the better entrance. I what? love, I love Eddie Guerrero. Uh, you may know this Rey Mysterio officially is my favorite wrestler ever. I've thought about it. I, I love Sting. I love The Rock. I love so many other people, right? We mentioned Trish, we mentioned Lita, but Ray is that guy for me. So Seeing his speech at the Hall of Fame, um, him being on this card just filled me with with so much happiness. The Eddie themed entrance, amazing, beautiful, ten out of ten. But I think his son did it did it better. Brad yeah. Prison Dom, I, I'm, the, I'm with you. The the little vignette and then him uh, coming out in the in the vehicle and and armed guards are with him and. I, I really enjoyed that. I think he won the entrance battle. He didn't win the match, right? His pops did beat him. His pop spanked him as well during the match. Yes, that huge pop. Huge. This match was was awesome. It's um, so good. I just the 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 perception of Dom, like what a shift it's been in the last mm-hmm. six to twelve months. It's it's really been a revelation. Love the entrances. Uh, that was your question, so I, I won't go too far in the weeds here. Entrances were amazing. I think Dom won the entrance battle though. I'm with him, hundred percent. Really? I, I, yes, uh, for for a variety of reasons. Days. Number one, I thought, I, I don't know, I haven't watched enough. If if Dominic was wrestling a singles match, I don't remember the last time he did, and it wasn't in a tag team. Was this a new theme for him? Did I just not hear it before? Because this theme had like all kinds of stuff set in it and elements in it that were like Mysterio related. That song was awesome. If I haven't heard it before, I don't, I don't know if I just missed it. I thought it, it was but... one he'd been using, but you're you're a much more consistent raw viewer than me, so I'll, I'll I, lean I, toward you. I never hear him use it because he always comes out to the like the standard Judgment Day music, right? right. So yeah. I, I Rhea has her own thing and Priest has her own thing, but I, I feel like Dominic's been coming out with people 
and then hasn't had his own theme music. I can't remember the last time he had a singles match. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I just it, it took me off guard. I don't, maybe I just missed it before, but I loved the music. I, I loved the when he got out of the car. I was like, is that Ray? I to, to see he's yeah, wearing that yeah, he's the, wearing the Judgment the Day colors, but yeah. I was like, that MFer is wearing the Halloween Havoc gear. That son of a bitch. Like, <laughs> I can't wait for Ray to beat him up in front of everybody. I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was super mad at it. I was just like, ah, oh, the the mask, you you punk, you're gonna get it. And then you know he did. Ray coming out uh, to the with the Eddie themed gear. He had like um Eddie themed gear, but he talked about for his Hall of Fame speech. And I, my guess is that this was purposeful. I don't know uh, how important psychosis was. So he came out with the shoulder pads with like the horns coming off a la psychosis. Yeah. So I don't know if that was a, a purposeful nod to him or if that's something that I'm missing from the past that he's done before. But I thought the, I thought the, uh, the vest was awesome. I thought his, uh, his gear looked incredible. Uh, coming out in the low rider, uh, as soon as I, I was in the, I was in the kitchen making cheesesteaks. That's when it was happening. And I hear, uh, I lie, I cheat, I steal playing over the music. And I was like, Oh my God, this is awesome. I know. I know. It was so amazing. Good. It really was. Yeah, it was so good. All of it was just so good. I don't know that there's a way they could have done this better. I didn't need the judgment day interference, but it made it Agreed. so much sweeter because the, it, it gave it an excuse for, for the other talent to be on the show. Even briefly, Tyler, something we're not talking enough about. I feel today is that we've resurrected a faction. One faction has not returned from the WCW days. And that's the Wolf pack. We've had the NWO, but not NWO Wolf pack, right? Tyler, the LWO is back. The LWO came out to help in this match. They came out to help uh, Ray because Damian priest and Finn Balor get involved. And Oh my God. Uh, I, the, the pop, the pop from Miranda was, was, was probably heard from space. Uh, I was yelling. I was, uh, this was so exciting for me. Uh, I used to love the LWO when I was watching the WCW. I thought they were awesome. They were different. They uh, were, were kind of themselves and genuine. And I always appreciated that about that. Uh, they were, they booked that way. Not so much, but uh, I always loved it. Uh, seeing them on my screen. So to see it again and in this match in particular, so many emotions and then it ended like the man when when he tossed the drink at Aaliyah's face whoo boy the crowd the crowd was up for that and then when mom slapped him my god man there were so many cool spots in this where it was all by the family right get splashes Aaliyah and then he 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 punts Ray after that I think or shoulder checks him and then same spot a little while later, but Ray gets, gets his before taking the belt off and beating him in the corner. I love this. This was, this was so much fun. Absolutely worth the payoff. I think it's dead now. I, d I don't know where either of them go from here, but I, I love this. I did too. This was great. Your LWO comments really appreciate you giving that a shout. I think for the new generation of fans as well, who maybe weren't around or, or haven't, um, gone back on, on Peacock and, and watched LWO from WCW, this could unlock a whole new, um, just, just so much potential for a new fan base to connect mm -hmm. with them. And please give me Santos Escobar in a singles match on this card over Logan Paul any day. I know it's not about in-ring talent. It's about eyeballs. I get it. But I saw him hit that. Was it a suicide dive? That Yeah, that's Tope on, on Damian Priest. The tope, yeah, where he... Like missile to Damian yes. Chris. I'm like, Darby oh like. yeah, this guy's on your roster and could have an absolute banger with Seth freaking Rollins. But kind of, kind of made like my that, point there. That, that might be what's what's coming this way, right? Yeah. Like that that yeah. feels like well, they interfered. So Judgment that Day, that's probably it. the next thing, right? Yep. There's because there's three of them in Zelina, three men in Zelina exactly. in LWO, right? So exactly. uh, well, there's the three three men and Rhea in Judgment Day. So maybe that's a thing, or we just get uh, Santos and Damian Priest uh, when, when they go over to Puerto Rico. 
for yeah. for the pay per view. And, and obviously, Priest presumably is going to be the you know the big baby face yeah. in, in that scenario. Uh, I'm so excited for that show. I'm eager to see what Bad Bunny does. I think he's slated to be the unofficial or not unofficial, the official host of it. Yeah. But given how tonight went in him uh, saving Ray, kind of think this could be Bunny's return to the ring. We'll see what happens there. I was shocked by the results of this, Brad. This was my biggest shock of the night. I came in tonight one of WrestleMania thinking Dom was for sure picking up the victory. I thought, I know, I know. Hey, I, <laughs> no, thought, I, thought, I thought, I thought, I thought Ray. <laughs> I get, and it's, it was the right move to have Ray win. I, I will um, confess that. I thought for sure he was going to eat the pin for his son. And even though the crowd wouldn't be happy about it, this would elevate Dom. So even though I was wrong, I do think this was the right call. It is Ray Mysterio's weekend. Seeing him celebrate in the ring after with his daughter and with his wife was so cool. And uh, like you, I think this was definitely a highlight of the evening. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, all all the things you just said. I, I'm I'm thinking now of Bad Bunny, Rey Mysterio, and Escobar as the team to face Judgment Day at that next pay per view to distance them from the feud, but maybe keep it keep it going. So Ray is trying to win his son back or something. Uh, try to get him out of Judgment Day. Who who knows who knows what they have in mind for this? Ticket but, ticket sold. Yeah, yes, I please. I just. Yeah, give, give it all to me. Does Ray join the LWO or is he already in it? It's very confusing. I'm not sure what's happening. And, and well, my, I would even ask too, is it is there any possibility this is Ray's last match? No, Ray said he wants to wrestle until he's 50. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not complaining about that then. Yeah, I'm zero, zero percent this is his last last match. I think he just said he's as so much. Good. He's so good. Yeah, maybe in the WWE. I don't know. I don't know when his contract is up because everybody's contract is coming up. Uh, we, we haven't talked about that yet because uh, they signed five year deals when AEW started because they wanted to make sure they were keeping their talent. Well, it's yeah, it's coming up to that time. I, man. I, I just saw the email from Fightful Select that Drew McIntyre, yes, uh, is, is coming up soon, and that's that's interesting. But He'll get re signed. We'll I they're they're far apart now, he's but amazing. he's got months, yeah. He'll, I'm sure they'll want to, yeah, and if they don't, him. they're apocalyptically stupid. Made event talent, yeah, yeah. he seems like a great guy. But just, you know, um, solid, solid all around. Uh, speaking of solid, though, Brad, the next match, I am simply going to read the participants and the results. And then I am going to pass it to you because I think this is a big moment for you. Rhea Ripley is our new SmackDown Women's Champion. She defeated Charlotte Flair. Your thoughts, my friend. I don't think it's a secret that Rhea Ripley is my favorite female wrestler. Maybe, maybe my favorite wrestler. I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite wrestler. Rhea is my, Rhea is my favorite one a anyway, definitely above. It's hard to put Jamie Hayter that far below that. Cause I just freaking love watching Jamie Hayter work. My God, she's good. I get, I, I get, I get giddy thinking about it. I just, you, you call you called it well before anyone I know. She's amazing. <laughs> I just, Rhea. Uh, yes, Rhea, Rhea is just one of one. Now I need There's, that match, by the way. Oh when we God. get the joint AEW-WWE super pay-per-view, uh, yeah. that is a match that I, I, I now need. Yes, I, yes, yes. <laughs> please. Yes, uh, best best two out of three nights or something. Do that. Yeah, have a, have a main event both WrestleMania nights. My God. So this this match was, for me, the match of the night. I like this better than the main event. I thought the wrestling was better than the main event. I did not think the storytelling was better than the main event, but I also understand why the women might feel slighted for not being in that spot. I think you got to end with that shot of Sammy and, and Kevin holding up the belts and being incredibly emotional and telling that story made the most sense to end the night with. But if you were going to end the show with the best match, I I think you got to go Rhea and Charlotte here. I just thought they had an incredible showcase. This probably should have opened WrestleMania. This probably should have been the first thing right out the gate. More than Cena theory. If, if, and only if you look at WrestleMania as um, the first match is the, one of the main event spots. And then the main event is the true main event spot. We, we all know that Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho's last real thing that he did in the WWE was the festival of 
friendship or whatever he called it with with Kevin Owens and the list storyline culminating at WrestleMania and they got put on the card like third, second or third and he felt really slighted and pissed off by it. Mick Foley and other people talk about um if you're not the main event on the card, make people think you are. And I think Rhea and Charlotte both accomplished that. Uh, there were a ton of insane spots, people kicking out of finishers. I couldn't believe some of that. But Tyler, Rhea had maybe my favorite DDT cell of the year. And I that knew, I knew, you were, I, knew I knew that was going to stick out to you. I knew. Like it. the look on her face when she got stuck and the way that she fell and just like f- total weight on top of her head, plant. The only hiccup in, in, that I caught in the, in the entire match is that Charlotte under rotated and landed straight on her face. I think she was supposed to flip back and land on her feet. I'm not sure. Uh, but she, she absolutely ate it on the that mat. Looked, that looked, and then they went to the replay. And I was yes. Like, oh no. I don't think there's any like movie magic here. I think homegirl just <laughs> face to mat. That looks snug. What, yeah, what yeah. Char- Charlotte's incredible. Oh my gosh. She that was looked, great in this match, man. That looked, I, I remember when I was young, Saturdays would be basketball games, like the local, you know, YMCA, NYS yeah. league. And I remember once getting a basketball to my nose, like an air and pass I wasn't ready for. And Brad, that is a, like a top five pain I felt in my life is a basketball. Yeah. Unexpected or even expected, frankly, to your nose. I guess it's yeah. just a sensitive region. I don't know. Yeah. I is, could only yeah. imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine Charlotte in that moment. I was in front of maybe a few dozen people. Uh, her being in this colossal arena, taking that spot and still having several, uh, many more minutes of that match to go, it it was gnarly. I don't know if just the angle made it look worse, but in my opinion, that spot just looked rough. Shout yeah, out awesome. to her for for her her uh, just badassness. That yeah. Was- yeah, I would absolutely. be done. I would be done at that point. She, just, she's pin, a, just pin me. I'm, I'm she, good. She's an incredible shape, like incredible shape, maybe the best shape of her career. I don't know. She came back, just cut, but she also hasn't wrestled in a while. It's been a minute, uh, not, not regularly and doing a lot of this stuff. So maybe it was just a little bit of ring rust or something else, but I don't, I don't know what it was. Um, I'm just glad she's okay. Cause it, it wasn't awful. Cause you could easily go, Oh, we meant to do that. Rhea meant to dump her on her face like that. And then that's just part of the match and that's fine. And that's kind of how they played it off. So I thought it was fine. Um, And the rest of the match was great. A lot of fun. Loved the finish. The riptide was, it looked like she was, it it was emphatic. I'll put it that way. Uh, It had a, it had a, uh, an exclamation point at the end of it. Uh, It wasn't Bianca KOD snug, but (laughs) it was, it was pretty close. It was pretty much up there. The, they these, were laying into each other in this yes. match. Well, we, we knew this match was going to be good. We had yeah. the evidence mm-hmm. from uh, 2020, right? The pandemic, the the pirate WrestleMania. That yeah. match was amazing in front of no fans. We knew this was going to deliver. And yet we're still marveling at this because these women are incredible. Yeah, it was amazing, man. The next thing that happened was uh, an amazing surprise for Michael Cole. Uh, Pat McAfee showed up uh, after the mid said, well, I offered an open challenge and nobody accepted it. And then Pat McAfee's music played. I thought it was cool that Pat McAfee was on the show. I'm glad they got the surprise. They had George Kittle get involved. Good way to get other places involved. You got an NFL player, an ex NFL player that has millions of followers and viewers and listeners. All of Logan Paul, you have Logan Paul on the card. You have bad bunny on Spanish commentary and being involved in the Rey Mysterio match in LA. The stars came out. I thought it was cool. Pat Mack, if he showed up, he wasn't on commentary. I'm, I'm betting we're getting him on commentary tomorrow night. Uh, with Michael Cole and uh, Corey Graves, and Corey Graves will complain the whole time. I actually really love that whole that whole thing. Uh, I find that deeply entertaining because Corey Graves is playing up his character, and Michael Cole seems genuinely happy, uh, just giddy the whole time. So while three minutes and forty seconds was probably the longest three more minutes and forty seconds ever, uh, I, uh, I I thought it was a good palate cleanser to go from the highs of Rhea Ripley 
winning and the emotional roller coaster into silliness and lightheartedness. And Pat McAfee is here. This will be fun, but we don't really have to care because there's no stakes into the main event. I, I thought this was fine. I thought it was a fun little segment, a way to get the Miz to do something on the TV other than just be the host. The way to have uh, Snoop be super awkward on the mic and leave. Uh, uh, all of it was all of it was fun. It was just fun. I have nothing to say about this. Uh, main event. <laughs> Good points. I have nothing to say. I'm glad yeah. Rhea got her flowers. T- Tyler is the biggest McAfee fan you will ever just, find. Main event. It, the, they're different. But a lot of my feelings about Logan Paul, I also uh, give to to Pat McAfee. I, I'm Like you, it, it is nice that Michael Cole seemingly genuinely gets so giddy. I just didn't expect that we were going to treat Pat McAfee's return as if this is Willis Reed in Madison Square Garden. It just, I, I'm just maybe a hater, Brad. I, I am not going to expend any more energy on this segment. Thank you for carrying us there. I'll, it, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, the, Logan Paul has, there's, there's stuff about him that is justifiably alarming and upsetting because of egregious things he's done. McAfee does a lot of really, really good things. He donates a lot of money to charities and he, he seems like he's a pretty positive dude and has a good And he heart. calls out Brett Favre. And he's in which a lawsuit I'm, with Brett Favre. Yeah. Which I'm all the way here for. Yeah. Uh, but I also know that you're not exactly here for the, uh, the frat boy vibes. So no, uh, no, I know I, that's I, the, I, the big problem with him is I, the cutoff tee, the, the frat boy stuff. I, I, I get it. I, yes, I think I'm just scarred from my days of undergrad and, <laughs> and being working in the in the dorms. I, I think I That's just fair. Like, fair. I just I, I could think of sophomore year having a, a, a wing full of of men and a lot of that population were were, were that. Um, so perhaps I'm just putting by by past Project, experiences. Projection. I'm projecting it onto yeah. Pat. But uh, this is way longer than I wanted to talk about that segment. So my thank bad. you for no no no. This is this is good. Thank you for carrying us. With that one, uh, somehow we are at the main event. It happened. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens defeated the Usos. They are now our new undisputed tag team champions. Uh, Brad, you and I were hoping this was going to be, I think it's fair to say, we were hoping this was going to be the main event for some time. Storyline wise, I think it really just made more sense. Even again, putting it ahead of the reported Charlotte versus Rhea main event. Um, I think this made all the sense in the world. I think the finish also made all the sense in the world. What did you think of the match? Where do you think we go from here for the new champs and for the Usos? What Did this satisfy you the way you you were hoping it would to close out night one? I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't really cared about this. Like everybody else is really up on this. I just, I don't care. Like the... For some reason, I know that Jay is going to he's going to spin around now that he lost the belt. He has no reason to stay with Jimmy. And this this will be a split there to start feuding with Roman. And if that split happens, Jimmy's eventually going to go back with Jay. And then both of them will turn on Roman and we could kind of see the end of the bloodline. But I, I feel like that's where those two go. Uh, they'll end up being focused on like maybe Roman and Solo. I don't I don't know how that'll work out. I don't we'll see. I think uh, some really good stuff could happen there, but I just, the story is we're ending the bloodline, not we're winning the tag belts. So I don't know where they go from here. I feel like Monday it'll be like, we finally did it, but now we're champs. Now we got to defend them and we're going to be the best champs and blah, blah, blah. And they'll go out, win a couple of matches and eventually lose the belts to somebody. I don't know who, but probably one of I don't know, maybe, maybe the street profits. That would, that would be great, but we'll, we'll see what happens with them. As far as the storytelling goes with this. Yeah. I, I loved that. It, that it paid, all paid off. I do think that Sammy and Jay were the story here. Cause, cause KO and Jimmy and Jay, like he's been involved. They attack him a lot, but this Jay Sammy story is really what the story was where KO and everybody else is just sort of, it's sort of secondary. It's always been KO and Roman, but now I'm, I'm getting back at Roman by getting back at other people is, is a little weird to me where Sammy has every reason to hate everybody in the bloodline. And 
that's that's the story. So I don't really know where they go from here, to, to be honest with you. That being said, I loved it because they were all acting their asses off. And they probably didn't have to go that far to act. Sammy and Kale were real life friends. They were real life best men. Uh, they were real life like bonded from early experience in the wrestling business. They're both from Canada. Like there's so many reasons that these guys are close and for them to shed tears in the ring at the end there could be because it's a culmination of it. And it could be because they're laying into their characters or it could be like me and my best friend, just won, my real life best friend, just won tag team championship gold that effing rules. And that shot alone is worth the main event to close out WrestleMania night one. Cause it's not going to get higher than that. That's that's, those are my thoughts. As far as the match goes, that was great. I thought I were great false finishes. I thought the false finishes tonight were awesome. There were a couple of 2.999s this evening. So uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Tickets were sold. No, no doubt. Um, figuratively and, and literally there. Yeah. This match was, was great. Uh, the ending absolutely worth the price of admission yep, so sammy hitting that first haluba kick and then to your point brad about the storytelling jay then falls into sammy's chest much like kevin owens did at survivor series just as you would say chef's kiss and then the brutality of sammy then hitting two more haluba kicks and owens hitting a stunner on jimmy jimmy goes out uh zane then hits the, the third and final haluba kick one two three like you said it was so important that not only does sammy win the belts for for him and ko but that he pinned uh main event j mm-hmm. perfect the yeah the only way to close this show even though I loved Rhea's victory, I think the only way, the proper way to close night one was Kevin and Kevin and Sammy yeah. holding the titles. Like you said, that real life, genuine emotion of, I just won the tag team titles with my best friend in the entire world. That's, that's something that, that we dream of as fans, right? It's, it just, that is another layer that hits you uh, emotionally. I think for a lot of the fan base, not just you and I, so proper main event, uh, proper way to tell this story. And this really creates more intrigue for tomorrow, in my opinion, with that that Roman versus Cody match. We, we've been thinking, we've been hypothesizing that this is the end of the bloodline or at least a new chapter in the bloodline. And uh, this finish just creates more intrigue for it. So awesome match, the right way to close night one. And I thought this was a really, really strong show overall. I thought this night one is great. The last couple, since they've been doing, I can't even say the last couple of years, since they've been doing this, what was it? WrestleMania 36, I think. So 36, 37, 38, and now 39. I have yet to see a night two be better than a night one. So like, right. Am I, am I wrong? No, no, no. I mean, last year, from my memory, thinking most recently, last year, night one was incredible. Bianca versus Becky. Cody versus debuting Cody Rhodes versus Seth. Cody Rollins. debuted Bianca Stone Cold Becky, Steve Austin Stone Cold was in KO. a match. Yeah, like I, I, yes. To answer your question, I don't remember the previous year, but last year, one thousand uh, percent. The previous year was Bianca Sasha, wasn't it? Yeah, Bianca Sasha, because the year before was uh, You're very was, persuasive was yes. Thunderdome, because Bianca Sasha was in front of fans, but not all oh, the fans. Man. That was two years ago. Yeah. 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 So that night one won it for me as well. Yeah, exactly. That's I'm just because night two, I think was uh, <laughs> the beginning of it was a box like structure. So yeah. Do, um, do, do you think night, do you think night two this year is going to change that trend though? No. <laughs> really? No. I hope even, even off the strength of Roman versus Cody. Cause that's, that's going to be box office. The women's tag match is night two. What part of that tag match are you excited about? Not a lot, unfortunately. I love all the talent in there. I want to see him in singles too. matches, not tag matches. I, I, I want to see Ronda. Ronda's team is, is winning. I think it's Ronda and Shayna, right? Yeah, and that's fine. They're winning, but yeah. like, I'm glad they're getting a WrestleMania spot. But I don't care about this. Yeah, like I, I want to see Ronda. I want to see Shayna have a singles run and get the belt. I want to see Raquel rise. I want to see a lot of these individual talents split off and doing other things. Yeah. I'm I'm just not 
I'm not super hyped for it. I'm hoping because I love all of them as individual performers that they'll blow us away in this match and it's going to be super cool. So I have, I have, I have hope that this uh, will exceed my expectations. Can, can I sell you on uh triple threat? I mean, of that one big, is a big meaty men slapping me for the intercontinental. I'm probably looking forward to that match more than the main event. Not going to lie. I'm not mad at that. And yeah. we also, we also got Bianca versus Oscar again, story wise. Maybe Jeez. not the strongest. <laughs> yes. To steal your phrase. Yes. Um, but I mean, those two are just, uh, for, I think yeah. they're going to deliver in a major way tomorrow. Might, might be better than Rhea and Charlotte. It, it, it very well could be. I mean, you know, they're going to be motivated to do it even bigger and even better. Right. And like kind of Oscar. Come on. Yeah. Night two. I mean, and then there's Brock versus Omas. I always wonder if I say his name correctly. Oh my! It it's... doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, what do you think we're gonna get an Andre moment for Brock? Like Brock is Hogan, Omas is Andre. This match. Hmm. I just don't. Care I wonder about if there's gonna match. be a post match. I. To me, it seems like there has to be something more than just or, the or five the, minute match. I, is this hmm. the final minority that Brock kills? Oh, that's a whole nother. Brad, how long? Brad, how long do you want this episode to go? Man? <laughs> We're trying to go a buck fifteen or under. We cannot go above that. I yes, I. I'm I, almost I, rooting for Omas in this, even though he's the bad yeah, guy. That's okay. Yes. I, I didn't go that far, man. That's well because that's, I'm like, come on, that's, man. Like that's a reach. What do we keep doing here? What do we keep doing? It's <laughs> it's, it's a bad Omos look. Beating Brock. That's <laughs> well. That's, that's just that's wild. No, it should not. It's happen, not going to happen. But, but I, absolutely I it should not this. happen. But. <laughs> it's just also culture. like ooh, I don't know, I don't know. It's a, it's not the, the greatest message in the world, uh, but I I think it could maybe this exceeds expectations. Good, maybe good Omas. I think Omas only yells, "This is my house" two times. I'm taking the under, uh, and and then we have Finn versus Edge, Demon Finn versus Edge in the Hell in a Cell. That could be really good or really stupid. I either one of those things could could happen. Yeah. It just would, it just depends. What is yeah. what do you anticipate Edge doing in the Hell in a Cell with Demon Finn? You're really strong at, at predicting these spots. I man, it's not going to be off the top of the off the top of a structure or anything like that. No, I don't Maybe, even think they go up there. And yeah. it looked like they're using the old Hell in a Cell, right? Right, right. I I don't know. I don't know. I just want these guys to be safe and to be okay after the match. I don't. I agree. A spear through some part of the structure. I. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. That's why I'm like. I don't Able's know why. Fine. I. I. I don't know that it matters because it's. It's Demon Finn. He's fighting a demon. He need, the demon needs to win this one. The demon has to win. The demon he has to. Uh, Edge is a Hall of Famer and he's Edge, but the the man's pushing fifty. And we're doing a hell in a cell match against a demon. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like, I just feel like this should be what a two. What are we doing here? One minute squash match where and demon Finn murders win. edge. And, like that's it. And then just leaves. And edge wakes up five minutes later while the rings is being reconstructed. <laughs> Fantasy book in one one I, I, I just, I don't know what they could possibly do. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, safe. Yeah, sure. Now, I, I will say if Mick Foley is in town and they're using the old Hell in a Cell cage and people get involved and there's nobody to back up Edge, Taker coming out or or Edge uh, uh, Mick coming out as Cactus Jack or Mankind or something could be really cool um, to, to be like the person that keeps away the rest of the Judgment Day. I think that could rule. Those spots might make this more entertaining and it's WrestleMania, so... Who knows? But I, I don't know, man. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us because right now they haven't done this yet. They need to blow me away tomorrow. The I, end. When we are having this conversation in 24 hours, I think there's a I think there's a real real likelihood that uh, night two could be the one for you this year. I'm just gonna throw that out there. This is a great cliffhanger. For our audience to join us for night two, uh, we will be recording in similar fashion after the show, and obviously we'll, we'll be dropping our thoughts from there. Uh, please, 
do us a favor and check us out online, specifically on Twitter. You can find Brad at Wind Duster. You can find me at Tyler J. McDowell. You can find us at GI Pod 19. We also have a website. Brad, you want to spotlight the website for a moment? You do incredible work there with, with the logo, with the colors, with posting the, the articles that we write. Uh, you want to tell us about that, that site we run? Sure, it's gimmickinfringementpod.com. We occasionally uh, write pieces of our lives, pop culture, things in wrestling. We do predictions there. Uh, you you sometimes talk about The Bachelor. Uh, on occasion, we we rant. It's 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 a great place to find uh, the, the the podcast, old episodes, the stream, uh, the YouTube links, all of all of those things. You can also check out the 19 Media Network page. Uh, on the site and then you can find out our other offerings from the network you also can find the full peel cast and the peel cast videos that are also up on the site with youtube links provided uh now that jordan peel has announced that there's the next project is going to begin filming soon i'm sure we'll be revisiting peel cast at some point with our, our good friend jabari davis yeah i don't i don't know I, what did i miss did i miss anything tyler no man that was beautiful you heard the man check it out we thank you so much for supporting us uh today every day every week uh thank you thank you thank you and we hope you will join us for the next one gimmick infringement is a part of 19 media group you can listen to us on good pods our premier partners as well as spotify iHeartRadio, apple or wherever you find podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube via the 19 Media Group channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share.